shall we start? So, hi everyone, I'm Tony Nguyen, I'm from Sydney, so today I'm going to talk about the uh, topic is called uh, Deep Learning Object Detection in Lab Your Application, uh, Design and Deployment. Uh, So before I start my topic, I would like to pay uh, my respect to Maria Petro. So she is uh, the leading authority in uh, image processing. Uh, so one of the science using computer program to identify important change in abnormal data. So her famous on her techniques called J transformation, which is a very powerful technique uh, to you in the um, uh, facial recognition system and uh, she also developed the uh, certificate uh, segmentation procedure uh, to apply in many uh, uh, computer vision applications. So when we talk about the uh, computer vision in LabVIEW application, uh, we, uh, one of the typical applications is uh, the defect detection uh, and then product counting. Of course, we have a lot of the uh, traditional method for the defect detection, but uh, one of the uh, problems when the defects come uh, on different set inside and the lighting condition as you know, showing here. So this is an example when we use uh, the defect detection in order to find the defect on the road. So similar applications could be found in a lot of computer vision applications when we need to detect the defect on our product in manufacturing uh, and in scratch. So we know that is uh, we can use the pattern matching, but because it's come from different science set, so uh, it's quite challenging to use the pattern matching. So the question is uh, how we use the computer vision technique to solve this defect detection problem. Um, so as you know that the uh, deep learning solution is uh, very well known. Uh, since we have the convolution neural network, uh, then we, we know that we can use the uh, convolution and pulling in order to find the feature of the uh, image. So this is one of the solutions for us in order to find different uh, defect on our product. So in here we can do the label and identify the location of the object or the defect uh, effectively. But uh, in the community, we don't have any uh, defect detection or object detection framework for LabVIEW user. So the typical uh, method when the user wants to apply that one into LabVIEW application is they have to use uh, third-party or existing learning framework like TensorFlow, EmicNet, PyTorch, uh, and design the AI model. So when we have the model, then we deploy it into the LabVIEW application. Uh, currently, we use the MI Vision Development API or maybe Python script. Uh, but they have the issue with that as well. So the first thing is uh, the uh, steep learning curve because all of the existing framework is uh, in Python or big way programming language. So normally, it would be C Sharp or C++. And also, the engineer need to understand the architecture of the AI model and then the methods, the training algorithm, as well, a lot of parameters as well. So uh, this is the very step link for, for the uh, LabVIEW engineer. And when we have the AI model, uh, we have another problem of the uh, runtime uh, inference. So currently, the NI Vision Development sub do support the inference uh, to support both TensorFlow model and OpenVINO. Uh, but I haven't seen uh, the GPU uh, feature on that. So that means the inference is a bit slow. Uh, the other often, uh, the approach, we use the uh, Python and then using Python nodes. Uh, so maybe some kind of the client server uh, architecture in order to run the inference in the server, the Python server, and then send the data back into the LabVIEW application. But it's also have the issue with the 
real-time requirement for some application when we require the uh, processing time is less than 100 milliseconds. And because we know that the Python is an interpreter, so the, it's not optimized on that application. But for some reason, we uh, develop something like uh, the deep learning object detection um, software. So it's separate into a different area. The first one is design. So in order to design the uh, AI model, we provide uh, the application for the OD hub. It's called it stand for object detection hub. So this is the graphical uh, software framework to allow the user design any custom object detection model um, with very limited knowledge on um, artificial intelligence uh, and also it doesn't require any programming uh, language skill especially in tech way uh, similar like uh, python or c sharp so uh, the old hub is uh, support different uh, type model from the uh, uh, edit faster rcnm efficient net or jolo framework so the principle is very simple. We go from uh, step by step uh, in five step from loading data, uh, data labeling, design the architecture of the model and train the model, uh, evaluate us, and then export the model for deployment. So everything is going through a very intuitive way for the user who have very limited knowledge to do the uh, training of the model. So after we have the model, then we come to uh, the question is how do we use this model in native LabVIEW application? Mm -hmm. So in order to provide the solution for the uh, LabVIEW user, we uh, provide the uh, API, LabVIEW API. So the API allow the user can uh, easily uh, deploy and use the AI model in native LabVIEW application. And then on top of that is uh, the APIs also uh, can be used in conjunction with the NI vision development. So you can see that uh, when we install the API, we have the example, give up example for the user to start with, and then we have something uh, very simple uh, function palette. So we have only six of them, so it's quite easy for you, and then all of the tutorial for the user to follow. Another uh, way to deploy the model or um, to you with the uh, lobby application is uh, when the user you in uh, some type of the real time application or FPGA, they, they don't have something like uh, the native API. Uh, we provide another solution is uh, we deploy the uh, AI model on the S device. So the S device could be the uh, Zestion Nano of NVIDIA or OpenVINO, and then it's turned the S device into the local AI inference. So there are two ways to do that. The, the, the first one is uh, the SDI communicate with LabVIEW application, like real-time targets or FPGA, and then uh, through the TCPIP communication, so we provide the uh, TCPIP protocol. Uh, so in that way, the LabVIEW application can directly connect to the hardware, uh, like for example, the on-boss camera or cloud camera. So we will give some that example in here or the S device can connect right into the camera and communicate with the LabVIEW application. All right, so here uh, we come with the um, example of how we design the uh, defect detection for the road application using only hub. Uh, the first one, this is the user interface of the application, of the hub application. Uh, the only hubs uh, provide uh, two different training engines. So the first one is a local training engine. If the user has a computer with a GPU uh, cast, the user can easily uh, utilize that uh, GPU and then start uh, um, uh, using that for the training. Or the user doesn't, if the PC doesn't have the GPU uh, resource, uh, the user can use the uh, API um, through the cloud, ANS cloud. Um, so the first step is uh, we load the data set. So the data set is very simple. It's contain the bundle of image. Uh, and that image needs to be labeled uh, before uh, being used to change the AI model. 
So uh, when we load the image in, uh, the application have the built-in uh, image labeling tool. So different to the other framework like TensorFlow or NXNet uh, or uh, some uh, Microsoft uh, CNPK, they have to use third-party uh, labeling tool. But this one is uh, allow the user to label directly from the application. And on top of that, the application also have the user to uh, control something like the typo error or the balancing between the um, the category in the model to make sure that the, the user can get the high-bit accuracy when you do the training. So after the uh, model, uh, after the data is labeled, it uh, will uh, send into the uh, training engine. So in here, we simplify all of the complicated uh, training par parameter, uh, allow the user only select some very simple uh, different type model the training uh, spec uh, and um, um, uh, it's, it's quite intuitive for the user to, to go in there without any deep knowledge of how to select the training algorithm for the uh, application so after the uh, training is finished the user can export the model uh, to the um, to the uh, real uh, application, but before the user can use that for the uh, real-time application or for real deployment, they can uh, export or text the model into the different type of the data set. So the data has never been seen before, or maybe uh, test the data with the uh, actual uh, camera system or actual system. So it gives them the confi confident level uh, of the accuracy the model or the performance uh, um, in real application. So after that step, uh, we already have the uh, the raw model. So now we want to use that model in uh, actual real application. So the first step we we want to use that we want to use the native API in order to deploy that uh, model. So in order to use the API, the first one, we need to install the API. We, we provide through the uh, VI, uh, the IBM package uh, uh, interface. And after that, we need to install the runtime uh, engine. So the runtime engine will uh, contain all of the dependency for the, um, the model can run in front in your normal computer with GPU resource. So all the GPU installation or all the configuration is done automatically, so user doesn't need to worry so much on how to config uh, different types of the GPU driver. After installation, we have the function palette. We already saw that, and then we can use that function palette in, uh, to view the application. So in here, we use some uh, uh, example of LabVIEW integration you in conjunction with uh, NI Vision Development. Uh, so we uh, allow the user to load the model, the model we already changed with ODH, and uh, the application loads that model in. So that's a block diagram. And here it works, so you can see that it's, uh, the response is, is quite fast. We can be able to achieve uh, 30 frames per second in that. So this one can detect the user with mask or without mask. So this is the, the first uh, step or the, the, the first uh, scenario when we try to use, to integrate the uh, AI feature in native LabVIEW application. Now for the other application like the real-time targets or FPGA, we recommend to use the S uh, deployment, so DDDM. Uh, with the way how we turn the S device into the local AI inference server. So we do uh, a standalone application to allow the user to manage the S device. So uh, currently we support NVIDIA S device. So any type of S device from Jason Siri, Jason Nano, Jason DX2 uh, with built in GPU. Uh, 
uh, we can turn this SD bar into the uh, SD bar AI enable. So the first step is uh, we uh, uh, upload the SD bar firmware. So with that firmware, the SD bar will be able to host any AI model uh, using our tool to, 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 uh, to train. So when we have the S uh, firmware, the S can be discovered by it's called the connectivity SD bar to the server. And then from there, we can associate the, the camera. So different type of camera, we, we support the IP camera, the remote IP camera. So here that the example of the remote camera is on the other network. Um, it's very far away from, from the SD bar. So when we uh, configure the camera and after that, we uh, deploy the model. So the model is the raw uh, format um, when we use our tool to change. And then uh, we can associate the model with the camera and then provide the uh, trigger. So trigger is uh, something like when the detection is happened and what we want to, to do with the trigger. We can use the trigger to send the control signal to the hardware or to send the alarm to third party application or to send the information directly into the server or database. So uh, after we do the configuration, the systems will uh, deploy the model into S device. So all of the optimization, uh, quantization is done automatically. So when the S device is, uh, have the model, it's become the local AI inference. Uh, and then it's uh, continuously sends the inference result. It captures the camera stream. So in here, we, we connect the uh, camera stream in Ho Chi Minh City. It's about uh, 1,000 kilometers away from the uh, from Sydney. Um, and then it gets the camera stream, do inference, and send back the result to the LV application. So in here, the defect, uh, the road, uh, defect detection is, uh, model is um, being deployed. And we can see that it's, uh, the response is quite okay. I think 22 frames per second. Right. So, uh, in summarize, I give you uh, present the way for us to uh, um, design the AI model, or the deep learning AI model, uh, for the Lavi application in two uh, different steps. The first one is design the AI model using the uh, graphical application without require any uh, programming skill or uh, deep learning knowledge going five step. And then when we have the model, we can deploy the model into LabVIEW application through the native API or through the uh, S deployment, X like the local AI inference server. So the user can integrate uh, that uh, SD by with uh, real time application or FPGA application. Yeah, so the the the, um, the end of the presentation. So now come with the question and answer. Do you have any question? So the question is, does it scale well for non-image data stream? Yes. So the the reason we pick up that uh, topic because um, in um, in Lavio application is for a lot of um, manufacturing application, the defect detection or counting is uh, mainly in the camera or uh, computer vision. But the principle is uh, is exactly the same for the um, for the other application for non-video stream. So we have another, um, it's called the uh, machine learning stereo and deep learning stereo. So uh, they are working exactly the same. So uh, 
uh, with machine learning studio, it allow us to design the machine learning model uh, also through uh, five uh, simple uh, different steps. And uh, that one is uh, allow us to build a multi-layer perception, uh, allow the user directly uh, use us in native Labio API. And the benefit of that is the model is very portable, and then we can deploy into not not only Labio application this one, but also the other uh, programming language as well. So one of the key benefit of that is uh, probably uh, the portable. And uh, we successfully deployed the AI model in uh, uh, Arduino. Uh, this one is only have two gigabytes of uh, memory. So we are one of the first uh, group deploy this one into the very small portable device. And uh, the other one is for the DL Hub Deep Learning Studio. So, so this one is different to the machine learning studio uh, in terms of uh, its support. Uh, all kind of um, different AI model for multi uh, multi layer perception into the convolution layer and into the uh, rest net or recurrent. So technically, all of the different layer uh, support in TensorFlow. We we do the support. We uh, we uh, we provide the support for that. So probably I can give you some kind of the uh, video, some kind of the demo how we use that. Um, okay, for me, say then. So this is, we can see it uh, through the YouTube. So this one will give you the DL hub in order to uh, identify the um, the disease on the X ray image. So we get the uh, the data from the uh, one of the uh, well known website for the AI community. And then we separate the data from the training and the evaluation. So now here that's the interface of the DL Hub. So that's load the data in. So we separate into the training and validation. And then and then you can see that the um, you can see in here. So if you see in there, you see that the um, all the AI layer will be on the select function. So uh, we provide something similar to uh, NI Vision Assistant concept. So we can build the model through different type of function from the convolution, pulling, flux, dance, activation, uh, all kind of thing. And then here we use some uh, some technique called transfer learning technique. That means we we use uh, existing model proven to work for the image classification and then we retrain it so it's content of the um and then we, with then layer so the benefit of that is uh, we uh, provide the model verification it's different to the python or uh, the other uh, framework it doesn't let the user know that if the model is correct or not and then uh, that's one uh, give the users uh, the confidence if the model is correct. So after the model, we go into the training again, it's similar to ODH. So we support different type of training uh, algorithm for momentum, uh, and then after that, we allow the user to verify into the dead, dead data. So it gives the user of the same how accurate the model is deployed. So that's training and that is for padding. So the training is 88%, padding 82%. It's not overfit. And then we load the system and to test with the actual data before we deploy it into the real, uh, real time environment. Yep. So that's the normal and then have some type of disease as well. Yep. So with So with the um, DL Hub, we uh, we can build any kind of the AI model uh, for that from the um, from that image to the uh, sound text to speak. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so yes, any question? What the packet write? What the packet write? How is this model trainer? Um, so the model trainer is a point depend on the uh, on the uh, software you're using. So at the moment, let me go into if the uh, if the user use the uh, machine learning uh, stereo, uh, we develop the uh, algorithm from Rava, so that we can uh, we control of all the component in that. So it's very easy to uh, allow the user to deploy in different hardware, different uh, um, operating system, and different to the other framework that we use uh, vary by algorithm is a second order for the optimization like the level uh, class facilitator uh, is you a lot in scientific paper so the the, uh, the machine learning stereo but for the deep learning stereo then we build uh, the concept is similar to keras so the idea that we build on top of the existing uh, training engine like the uh, TensorFlow or uh, CNTK from Microsoft. Uh, so we can support more uh, training engine for the user. So that means the user, uh, the, the model when it build is compatible with, um, with existing framework. So it's, it can directly load into the Python application. Yeah. Okay, any, any question? Yeah, uh, I can get more questions on that. Probably I talk about the um, the second way when we deploy it into the um, into the S device. So this is this is one of the way when we uh, it's not only applicable for the LabVIEW uh, applications but also it's available for different type of uh, program, uh, programming language. So the idea is um, we deploy the uh, AI model in, into the S device and turn it into the local uh, AI inference. Uh, and then the user can integrate. It's not only integrate directly into the S device, but also integrate with that for we call Antis. So Antis is, uh, is kind of the server. It's, it's, uh, it's not only allow the user deploy the model on the S device, but also allow the user to manage the S device and provide the dashboard, also provide the communication with the other third party application. So through the trigger, now, for example, if, if we have the, um, the uh, surveillance camera, now, we have the system with the surveillance camera, and then the existing system is uh, like, it has VMS, it's called the video management system. And uh, the VMS, the normal VMS is only allow the user to uh, to monitor the video stream, but couldn't do any kind of smart link on that. So the idea is that we want to turn that normal uh, IP camera or uh, normal surveillance camera into the smart camera. So through that configuration, we can assign the camera into the S device and then provide the uh, AI enable smart link on that system. So suddenly going through the system without any modification of the, uh, the infrastructure, the whole surveillance cameras become the, uh, the smart system. And we can do a lot of things. We can, we can change the model. We can, uh, we can lock all the lock in there. So uh, the system, the normal system, the normal VMS system become the uh, intelligent analytic video system allow the user to Search the event 
uh, file what's going on or send alarm or, or control signal into the system. So this is one of the applications outside love you uh, application if you, you want to record yeah. Yeah, any question? Sorry, I go a bit fast on the on the presentation because I want to spend time for more uh, questions with you. So where to get only half and half and uh, the other half? Well, we can show you the. Uh, so this is the website. And again, um, through the website you can see that the how the unbit system works. So the uh, normal system have only the normal IP camera and then the third-party application so the user doesn't want to to change or when they want to add the intelligent in they don't want to replace all of the thing uh, so there are only three ways for the user to to turn the existing system into the AI enable system the first one is through the, uh, the camera or replace all the smart camera all the normal camera by the smart camera, so that's one is very uh, not very quite effective, expensive, and then replace the infrastructure. Yeah. Second one is uh, they turn the existing VMS system, the video management system, into the uh, smart system. So some VMS that have the uh, analytic plugin or intelligent plugin. But because it's uh, run in the same server, so it could have something like bottleneck in there. So when we introduce the system, so that the whole ecosystem, uh, the the AMP is getting the data stream from the video, and then uh, puts the data into the data server. So we you are two, that's the three to uh, introduce, use us two in order to train the AI model, and then through that we deploy the AI model into the SDI. So when the system is expanded, we simply add more SD buying to to uh, to control some kind of load balancing, so that the system is, doesn't have some bottleneck -like issue. And then the SD buy when it's deployed, it's become the uh, AI local inference. And then all the result is sent through the trigger, and then we provide different type of triggers like the um, um, control directly into the hardware or the database or the mobile app uh, mobile app web application through the RESTful API. All the user can also upload the model into the internet cloud and then we take advantage of the existing user uh, model to deploy directly into the SD yeah. So that we that the architect and then in here we have all of the uh, three tool how the user to simplify AI design. Yeah. So we have uh, around 30 minutes more. Any question?
So, um, yeah, thank you. So, if you uh, don't have any question, you can contact us through last uh, email. Yes. Eric, do you have any question on that? Okay, so uh, you can you can uh, get some information through yes the uh, the website yes. Thank you for that. Yeah. So. All right, so the Eric, um, so the idea that we we separate the uh, process into uh, step, design the AI model and then deploy the AI model. So the design, we use the uh, graphical programming, uh, graphical um, user interface program to design the AI model in five steps. And then when we have the model, we can use us in LabVIEW natively, or we can deploy it into the SDI for the AI uh, local inference server. So, anyone have any question? Sorry, I'm going to be fast. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yes. So again, to the question that uh, for any other application, it's not the uh, uh, Windows City 4 bit or Intel City 4 bit. Uh, we don't provide the API for that. Uh, the reason is that um, it's the first one, the FPGA uh, CI, CI uh, IOs uh, doesn't have the uh, GPU support. And then we um, we build the application is uh, a little bit different. We try to review the existing framework to to build the AI, AI model that uh, is comparable with uh, famous framework. So uh, the best way to you in conjunction with the FPGA or real time application that we deploy it into the uh, SDI and did it away. So through that SDI, uh, through the SDI, we allow the user to uh, communicate with real-time application through the uh, TCP/IP protocol. Does it have Chris? So in that way, we can um, 
remove uh, the results of the uh, FPGA for the uh, AI inference. Yes, so we have another uh, another program. It's called the machine learning and deep learning. Um, sorry, machine learning stereo, machine learning stereo and deep learning stereo, where you can view any uh, AI model for the application with non uh, vision data. So this could be the. Uh, um, uh, signal, electric, electrical signal data, or uh, any kind of the uh, void data. What is the ballpark number of example you would work to train a model? Um, sorry, what the ballpark number of example? For Christopher, yes, yes. So uh, for the S device, is already have the uh, GPU viewing. So you can you look at the NVIDIA Zetson series. It it has the GPU and it's very affordable. And for the LabVIEW API, we uh, recommend it to use GPU. So different to NI Vision Development Mojo, we do support GPU. Okay, so all of the, um, I guess as a, the data sample or maybe the training, right? So the idea of the, uh, uh, all the parameter, uh, the system, yes, the training, yes. So um, when we load the data, we already know, uh, we have some kind of the auto succession uh, algorithm to recommend the optimal training step. For the user, and then and then the user can can right away use this. Um, of course, uh, during the training, is report the accuracy and provide the user some kind of validation to make sure that uh, they miss the targets. If the users uh, require more training, uh, we can continue to train the model. So that's mean we can keep going training. We can stop the training at any time and then come back to train again to get more accuracy and achieve the stability. Yes. So that's, that's completely different to the other framework, which is, which is great. Another, another great feature that we allow the user to uh, try different combination of the uh, parameter. So we call uh, experiment. So each experiment is, uh, could be the different kind of the parameter. So the user can compare different type of AI model for the same data set. So this is one of the quite unique to allow the user to get the best of the, uh, the best result of the training procedure. Yeah. So for the, um, for the uh, machine learning uh, stereo uh, when the user loads the data in, the system will identify uh, two different kinds of the model need to view. The first one is a uh, regression. So this one is view a lot in in uh, predictive uh, model, like uh, predict the chain or um, beyond the data. We uh, we view the regress model in order to in uh, to do the data inpolation. Yeah or installation as well. So and the other one is uh, classification. Uh, we separate into the different type of class. So the user doesn't need to uh, to do the uh, model configuration because the, uh, the, the systems uh, identify the type of the data and then recommend the user to use it.
probably I can so I will show you the um, how the uh, how the uh, DL hub works. So here's how N hub works. So uh, the examples we use the uh, graph classification. So we try to compare our tool with MATLAB um, neural network to toolkit. So we get exactly the same data and then when we run it. So the data is uh, reformat into the Excel file. So that's the, the question that you, you asked is, is none um, image uh, application. So the data is, is separate into uh, two different uh, pair, input and the target. So the target is uh, separate the inputs by the keywords output, and then, and then we use as one the Excel file uh, to load into the application. So again, that is the design one. So when we load the data in, uh, the system is automatically identified is uh, the, the classification or some kind of customized. So the user, advanced user can tweak, but the, the system uh, recommend the user the uh, proper um, model for, for, for user to use. And again, in the training algorithms, all the training parameter or all the criteria is also auto surveyed as well. So user can, again, to uh, tweak and we provide the uh, validation process both in confusion magic and the um, uh, uh, ROC curve to allow the user to verify if the model is, uh, is good enough and then we uh, the user can uh, find the accuracy of the model on the test data set before they can uh, export the model into the uh, actual model for uh, deployment. So in here that we can export the model in, in different type of the environment. Uh, it's not only LabVIEW, but also um, C sharp iOS, uh, C++ Arduino. So it depends on the user application. So in here we export the model in the LabVIEW. And again, similar to only half. All of the um, the lab view user accept the uh, function palette, so we have the uh, API for that. No, um, the testing is more than that. Yes, so when we load it, it's only the gleam of the data. So the benefit of, oh, sorry, um, the question, the Chris uh, question about the uh, GPU, only the uh, machine learning uh, studio doesn't require GPU. So we can we can use CPU to run it because it's uh, all of the model is uh, three layer. So we, we don't even need, of course the GPU is, is better, but in terms of the performance, we can still achieve this very, fast inference with uh, CPU results. And um, that's the machine learning model can uh, potentially can deploy directly into the FPGA if we want. So for the small application, we, we can use us. So give the user the prediction. Any question?
for all of three different different product uh, the machine learning application or machine learning studio allow the user to deploy the AI model directly into the hardware. Uh, it is the Arduino with only two uh, kilobytes of the memory. So after we have the model and we export the model into uh, into the file and then it can be loaded directly into the uh, Arduino application. So the same technique can be applied for different type of hardware if the user use is non uh, non emit application. So this one can be uh, applicable for I think any design of the uh, classification and regression with with uh, with the data is not emit and then can can deploy in any kind of hardware or uh, any kind of operating system. So this is uh, how we type it directly into Arduino and then using the com to uh, allow the user to input the data. Yeah. Any question? So we need two way to allow the user using the API or deploy directly into the S device. So if you um, need more information, you can contact us through the Skype the, um, contact point to the email, uh, Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we have the YouTube channel to provide all the related video on, on how we use this. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Thank you, Eric. Probably I can This is the surveillance camera with the production line, and then we can use that technique to detect some kind of defect. So, so the same principle apply for different type of uh, product. So the, um, the user then have the freedom to use whatever they want for the manufacturing application. So if you don't have any question, you can contact us through us. And um, thank you so much.